Howdy, friendos. My name is Stuart, and welcome to the third part of our Breaking Bad quadrility. And today we are looking at Walter White, the lead character of Breaking Bad, and the character who drives most of the narrative throughout that series. Last week we took a look at Gus Fring, and the week before that we took a look at Jesse Pinkman, both former business partners of the Chemistry Kingpin. Be sure to check out those videos as well as this one if you want to keep up with our D&D &D Sember Marathon. And if you want to do that, be sure to drive on down to the subscribe button and park your camper down there. Cook up a nice batch of engagement by hitting the like button and tell us how good our chemistry is in the comments down below. I hate call to actions, but that one was actually pretty fun to write. Anyway, Walter White is a 50 year old high school chemistry teacher at the beginning of the series. As a child, Walt's father died at a young age due to Huntington's disease that left him a shell of a man. This traumatizing experience of seeing his father as a broken man permanently altered his perception of the world that led him to becoming obsessed with legacy. Walt studied at the California Institute of Technology and became best friends with Elliot Schwartz, where they would go to form gray matter technologies and where he would go to earn a Nobel Prize in chemistry. At the time, he was also dating his lab assistant, Gretchen. Though they were briefly engaged, he eventually dumped her because she came from a wealthy family and he was unable to cope with the feelings of inferiority due to their wealth and success. He sold his share of the company to Elliot and would later regret this decision later in life when Grave Matter became a multi-billion dollar company. This was Walt's second narrative wound as he always blamed Gretchen and Elliot for his financial problems throughout his life, even though it was always his decision to leave Grave Matter Tech. Years later, Later, he worked in various labs, but eventually met and married Skylar Lambert, and they moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico, where he eventually became a wildly overqualified chemistry teacher. Walt is a genius, and a prideful one at that. He knows he's usually the smartest man in the room, and has a passion for chemistry that is unmatched by any other character in the series. Walt, at the beginning of the series, is financially struggling, and has two jobs and a pregnant wife. He then discovers that he has late-term lung cancer, and will likely not survive another few years. Lost and looking for a quick way to make money to leave for his family, Walt turns to cooking methamphetamine in order to take care of his family after death. At the beginning of the series, Walt is true neutral. He is a 50-year-old man with no direction other than basic survival in the modern age. His passions and ambition have been beaten out of him by his life and his own inability to keep a job. He's also currently financially struggling because of this. This obviously changes throughout the series, but this is where we'll begin. And with that out of the way, let's go. Howdy friendos! Randomly British Stuart here, and before you get to the alignment dings, this video is proudly sponsored and brought to you by Dragonair Silent Gods. Okay, okay. Just smash through it! Base! Dragonair Silent Gods is a multi-platform role-playing game, RPG for those in the know, that will be available on mobile and PC. There's magic lingering on the gate. Oh! Don't this is big blind time. It's also inspired by the world's greatest tabletop game, where you can help feed that inner dice goblin in you. What is day and day noises? Oi! <laughs> Your head will crown my honor! Gosh. In addition to the traditional character collection and development system, this game adds a grid-based combat, differentiated sandbox exploration, and seasonal social gameplay. What is that music? All events in this multicultural sandbox adventure are done through dice checks, and the characters you can recruit can specialize and help you in those roles to pass certain points. Game. That's wrong. But don't take my word for it. Play the game yourself in their closed beta, now available by joining their Discord. Go and join the other 1,000 players already having a great time in the beta. <laughs> That is poggers! Making a character feels like a tabletop game too. You pick a race, or species if you are proper, your class and your stats, and you go through an epic level story with dragons, heirs of dragons, and of course, their silent gods. No! Oh, box. That is a wonderful part of the game. Join any time between now and January 7th in order to access what this game has in store on your PC and mobile device with the Google Play Store. Join this playtest on Steam. This offer is available to all those in all these locations. USA, the Great British Isles, or the UK, the Canada, Australia, also Indonesia, the Philippines, Japan, and Korea. You can also chat with the developers during that handy link down there in the description to their Discord server. When you get there, tell them randomly British Stuart from the loading crew has sent you, and that you're ready to roll a nat 20 with Dragonair Silent Gods. A guy opens his door and gets shot and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. I'm gonna run the register. Oh God, no. We talked about this. I'm short-handed Walter. What am I to do? 
In the first half of episode one, Walter is going throughout his life, not really doing much or applying himself. He is a pushover at both of his jobs and lets people walk all over him, even at his own birthday party. Neutral. I just need to make sure you fully understand. Best case scenario with chemo, I'll live maybe another couple of years. After finding out that he has cancer, Walter becomes erratic, quitting his job at the car wash and going for a ride along with Hank. It's there that he sees Jesse fleeing the neighbor's house, chaotic neutral. But you know the business. And I know the chemistry. I'm thinking maybe you and I could partner up. Either that or I turn you in. It's at this point that Walter approaches him and asks to partner up to help make and sell crystal meth. Them setting up their first batch is pretty much the entirety of episode one, Chaotic Neutral. <laughs> While trying on clothes, some kids were making fun of Walter Jr. Walt retaliates and humiliates the kid by doing it. Despite the fact that I don't think anyone faults this, he did technically assault a person who is decades younger than him. I'm just gonna say chaotic good for defending his son's reputation, but this could easily be chaotic evil as like a revenge thing. I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt though. Oh yeah, work it. Baby, work it. After setting up their lab, Walt and Jesse cook their first batch of meth. They're apparently really good at it. Neutral. Where did you get this? Hell Jesse this tries to sell meth okay, to Crazy Eight, home. but gets accused of being a Kicked snitch. Then the cousin who got busted during the ride along from earlier recognizes Walt and accuses him of being a DEA informant. Walt cuts a deal with them to let them both go if he teaches them his recipe. Instead, he creates phosphine gas to trap and kill them in the lab. This literally is a kill or be killed moment of self-defense. True neutral. He then goes on to save Jesse by getting him away from the fire caused by Emilio. Neutral good. This action is a bit harder to quantify. Walter thinks the jig is up and leaves a message for his family and tries to die in a suicide by cop manner. I personally find suicide by cop to be chaotic evil because it's forcing the hand of another, but I also think Walter is panicking and unsure of what to do with himself. I think I'll be lenient on this one and chalk it up to a panic chaotic neutral. In episode 2, it is revealed that Crazy 8 is still alive and they now have a body in their RV. They flip a coin. One of them will have to kill one of the drug dealers and the other will have to dispose of Emilio's body. Walt drew the straw to kill Crazy 8 and instead of doing that, he hands him supplies to keep him alive. Chaotic good? After Jesse flubs getting rid of Emilio's body, Walt helps him clean it up. This isn't an altruistic decision, but a practical one. Neutral. There's no poison. Okay. So that'd be the way to do it. If you're gonna do it. After that, Jesse pisses off, leaving Walt with Crazy 8. Walter does his best to try to get out of it and free him, not only to ease his own conscience, but he feels it's wrong to kill another human being. He does everything in his power to let Crazy 8 present a case for himself, knowing it's putting him in a bad position. Walter was actually going to free him until he realized that the drug dealer managed to stealth away a piece of broken plate and was planning to shake him. Feel free to disagree if you want, but I say Walt going out of his way to not only give Crazy 8 an option to walk away with his life, despite the fact that he's a drug dealer, and he tries tried to murder both him and Jesse is chaotic good, even if the ultimate decision is killing him for self-preservation. There's something I have to tell you. At the end of episode three, Walt tells Skylar about his cancer, which bleeds into episode four. Skylar has a breakdown in front of her family, which leads to his secret ultimately being outed for him. I'm just going to give him a neutral for this. There's an obnoxious Wall Street banker type guy walking around this episode just being loud and obnoxious on his phone. Walt blew up his car. Totally justified, but still chaotic evil. <clears throat> oh, look, there's Elliot. Oh, come on, let's go say hello. At the beginning of episode five, Walt and Skylar head to a party of their rich friends, Elliot and Gretchen. Skylar explains the situation and they offer to pay for his cancer treatment. Walt refuses because he doesn't want to accept money he didn't earn. And he also believes that they ripped him off and stole from him, so there's that. He then accepts that he wants to die and explains to his family and their intervention why he feels this way. Near the end of the episode, he does eventually decide to accept treatment and approaches Jesse to cook again. This is a combination of lawful, true, and chaotic neutral, so I'll just split the difference and call it true neutral. Really very therapeutic. 
Jesse and Walter cook another batch of meth, but Walt quickly realizes that it isn't selling fast enough, so he tells Jesse to go get a distributor named Tuco. The deal goes badly, and they get their meth stolen. So Walt steps in and negotiates another deal. In order to let Tuco know that they are not to be fucked with, this happens. This is not meth. He demands that they be paid fairly for the meth they made and compensation to Jesse for his injuries. This is negotiating a good deal for both him, Tuco, and he does right by Jesse. Meme me all you fucking want, guys, but I'm calling this lawful good in a nat 20 scene. Walter flirts with and then fucks Skylar at a parent-teacher conference. To all the other teachers out there, I do not advise this, but chaotic neutral. That's it? That's all you got? We had some production problems. After realizing that they would not be able to produce enough meth for Tuco, Walt switches the formula and started creating M &M the blue meth that the show was iconic M &M. for. He makes a shopping list for Jesse, most of which could be bought legit, but they realize that they need to steal methylamine blue. Walt formulates a plan to steal it, and they do. Neutral evil. <laughs> The deal with Tuco goes south when he beats the shit out of his cousin, I guess, for speaking out of term. Walt makes some ricin to poison him. This doesn't work out due to a series of misunderstandings. The episode ends with both Jesse and Walt on a business end of a gun heading to a hideout. What secret ingredient? Chili powder. The next episode is a long cat and mouse game of the two of them trying to poison Tuco and get away from him. They get his guns away from him and Jesse gets a shot on him in the gut and Walt on a whim decides to leave him in the ditch to let him bleed. This is arguably a crueler way to let him die, but I think Walt was letting nature do the rest, so I'm gonna say neutral. Since a missing person report was filed on Walt, they had to come up with a reason for him to be missing, so he creates a scheme where he pretends to be in a fugue state in order to fool his friends and family. Chaotic Neutral. I can't tell you how good it feels to be home. After the fugue state, Walt tries to reattach himself to his family, even though they're all kinds of on to him, being dishonest. He spends the episode lying to everyone, ignoring Jesse and basically trying to regain control. I'm going to call this Chaotic Neutral. He does eventually give his half of the money to Jesse, despite having no real obligation to. He lets him clean himself up and feeds him. Neutral good. 16 ounces should net to me $16,000. 16. Not 15. Something came up. After Jesse gets everything up and running again, Walt starts production up again and has Jesse run the management side of things. There was a point where they were short about $1,000 because of a theft. Walt eventually hands Jesse his old gun and tells him to go get the money back by any means, otherwise their street cred was going to plummet. I'm going to say lawful evil since he's delegated this task. We need to talk. Can you not do or say anything to anyone? Gretchen, the rich gal from earlier, approaches Walt's family this episode and gets caught up in Walt's lie. He apologizes for this and eventually culminates in him telling her to stay out of their business and piss off. He tries to be calm and reasonable, but eventually loses his temper once she presses him for more. Chaotic neutral. Usually I gotta chase dudes down for their money, but today, everybody's paying up. True that. After Jesse handles the drug addicts from the last episode, Walt lets his posse believe that Jesse was the one that killed the one guy with the ATM. He then insists that Jesse capitalize on his newfound reputation as a cold-blooded killer. Technically, this is lying with the truth and a means to control more territory. So, lawful evil. Albuquerque police, you're under arrest! Get on the ground! Badger, one of their drug dealers, gets busted, and the best advice they're given is to kill him in prison. Obviously, Jesse and Walt refuse to do this, so they hire a lawyer, Saul Goodman, in order to formulate a way to get him out of prison and to make sure they do not get implicated. They come up with a crazy scheme with a professional fall guy, and everyone leaves relatively happy. Lawful good. We have to cook. What? Today? No, you'll need today at least to gather supplies. That Walt is supposed to be getting x-ray results this episode, and sees an image that looks really scary, so he calls Jesse and lies to him, telling him that they need to spend the next four days cooking, otherwise the batch will go bad. They cook a massive batch worth about $1.5 million. They share a genuinely happy scene, but hijinks ensues. They manage to work their way out of it, and Walt discovers that the image from earlier was relatively harmless. He doesn't take this news well. Most of Walt's actions this episode are chaotic neutral. Go ahead. 
Walt kind of goes off the deep end this episode. He gets his son drunk and makes a giant scene at his own remission party. He then goes absolutely ham on fixing the house, trying to make himself feel valuable and manly by using his hands to build things. Let's just give him two chaotic neutrals. Stay out of my territory. The episode ends with him threatening another cook and scaring them out of his territory. Debatable, but I'm going to go with lawful evil. One of Walt and Jesse's distributors gets shot dealing outside of their territory. In response, they decide to unload their batch on a big time player. They appear at the designated location, but he doesn't show. Walt figured out who he was and made a deal to sell him their batch for 1.2 million. He then has to break into Jesse's house to get it, but he does make the deal happen. Lawful neutral. If I gave you that money, you would be dead inside of a week. After the drug deal, Jesse panics and calls Walt, not knowing where all their meth went. Walt lets him stew in panic, but after a confrontation, lets him know that the deal went through. Walt then refuses to give Jesse his half million on the grounds that he is worried that Jesse will spend the money on drugs and that he's afraid he'll OD. He does promise to give him the money after he gets clean, though. I'm actually going to call this chaotic good. If you both get clean. You know what? I take that back. This is blackmail. Because what I know about you, high school teacher turned drug dealer with a brother-in-law in the DEA, that'd make one hell of a story. Jesse's girlfriend Jane finds out about the money and blackmails him. He gives them the cash that he owes Jesse and leaves. After a strange twisted fate where he runs into Jane's dad at a bar, Walt heads over to Jesse's house to confront him where he accidentally knocks over Jane, where she then gets sick and chokes on her own vomit. Walt sees this happen and does nothing to stop her death. He does this not only to protect Jesse, but to protect his own interests. I'm going to label this as neutral evil especially since he never tells Jesse the truth about what happened here this night at least until season five sit tight I know who to call Jesse goes on a bender after Jane's death and Walt goes out to not only get him out of the drug den but also to get him into rehab and comforts uh, him at his lowest neutral good so you know. where's your phone hmm? your cell phone did you bring it which one Walt gets caught pretty much red-handed by Skylar about lying, and she kicks him out. He doesn't really know what to do, but then a pair of airplanes explode above him. Honestly, this doesn't impact the story much and shows the extent of Walt's actions since it was Jane's dad who caused the accident. He starts to burn his money because of what it cost him, but stops and just sort of goes about the next few weeks or so, just acting impulsively and trying to worm his way back into his family's lives. I'm just going to give this all a big, fat, chaotic neutral. Walt moves back into his family's house, which pushes Skylar to have an affair. Once Walt finds out, he goes erratic again and visits Ted's place of business in order to attack him. He attacks Saul Goodman and tries to make out with its principal. And he yells at Jesse for cooking meth with his formula. Let's just give this all a quick chaotic evil. Gus pays Walt his half of what Jesse earned by selling the meth. Jesse gets up in arms about it, so Walt confronts Gus, who offers him a job in making more meth. Walt eventually accepts and gives Jesse the rest of the drug money. Walt also hires Saul to money launder for him. Lawful neutral. He's here. Walt's brother-in-law, Hank, who works for the DEA, discovered the existence of the RV and is on to Walt and Jesse. Walt conspires a plan to destroy the RV, but Jesse leads Hank right to the vehicle. Walt calls Saul, who gives him information and to make up a lie to lure Hank away from the junkyard, where they can quickly destroy the evidence. Chaotic neutral. <laughs> After the lie he created to get Hank away from them, Hank went and beat the shit out of Jesse. Jesse was going to sue him, but Walt offered him Gail's job in an effort to save Hank's financial life, and as a means to appease Jesse. Granted, Gail gets fired, but seeing as how this is also more out of loyalty to Jesse and Hank, I'm going to say this is lawful good. I need you to sit patiently. Two assassins attempt to kill Hank, but he manages to defend himself. This leaves Hank in a hospital. Since Hank is in the hospital, Walt wants to be there for his family, so lies to Gus about production delays so that he can do it. Chaotic good. You're into ambling. Skylar comes up with a lie to explain Walt's sudden massive wealth from drug money. Walt goes along with it and offers to help pay for Hank's hospital Changed bills. Him. Neutral good. She has a point. 
It makes more sense that I invest right here. For the next few episodes, Skylar and Walt try to figure out ways to launder their money, but within that time, Jesse discovers that the gangsters who shot Jesse's friend Combo from an earlier season works for Gus. Jesse planned to assassinate both these men, not only because they did this, but because they are also using a kid as their drug mule. Walter discovers this, informs Gus, and then they work it out peacefully. Later on in the news, Walt discovers that this same kid was killed by the gangsters, leading Walt to do this Nat 20 scene. Run. I got my old job back. At least until they kill me and Gale takes over. Walt realizes that he will eventually be killed by Gus once Gale perfects his formula, so he plans to kill Gus. Unfortunately, he is intercepted by Victor and Michael. As he pleads for his life, he tells them that he will get Jesse. He then calls Jesse on the phone and quickly tells him to kill Gale, to which Jesse goes out and does. Neutral evil. We need to start a cook in the next ten minutes to keep to our schedule. After being captured by Michael and Victor, Walt tries to play it cool by offering to cook more meth. His reasoning is that Gus will be much angrier if they allow a batch to go bad. This is a survival tactic to show Gus just how valuable he is as a cook and so that killing him would be against Gus's best interests. Lawful neutral. New Mexico's not a retreat jurisdiction. Man steps to you bent on doing you bodily harm. You got every right to plant your feet and shoot to kill. Putting my very personal feelings aside, Walter purchases a gun to protect himself against Gus. He does this by going to a dealer who has untraceable weapons. Even the vendor himself advises against this, and Walt is acting in distress. He spends part of this episode practicing and eventually trying to figure out ways to kill him. He even tries to convince Mike to join him. Chaotic neutral for the whole episode. Something along the lines of, you weren't man enough to face him yourself. What? That you had to send your woman to do your business for you. <laughs> Walt learns that Gus is spying on him in his lab. Walt goes off on this a bit and then gets distracted when he learns that Bogdan insults his manliness. Walt then becomes determined to buy his car wash. Respect, but chaotic neutral. Walter White. <laughs> you got me. While prepping for a family dinner to announce that they're buying the car wash, Walter is surprised to announce that Hank is consulting on the murder case with Gail. Panicking, he checks it out and tries to prep Jesse like Skyler was prepping their gambling story. Unfortunately, this just causes Jesse to spiral harder, chaotic neutral. Where is he? Once Jesse fails to show up at work, Walt stops everything to go looking for him. He is 100% panicking and acting irrationally, but Walter is willing to ice anyone that hurt his boy. Once he realizes Jesse is safe, he goes back to cook. Earlier, when he was panicking about Jesse, he sent Skylar a goodbye message. She heard it, thinking it was an impromptu, candid message. She gets overwhelmed with emotion and bangs his brains out. Is Walt lying in this message? No. Does he really love Skylar? Yes. Is this sex under false pretenses? I'd argue no, but it is slightly dishonest, but like, I'm gonna go with neutral. Feel free to debate this in the comments. I, I, I'm sure other people have strong opinions about this. Hey! This is a two-man job! I can't do it alone! When he finally gets back to work, he throws a temper tantrum without Jesse. There's a good chance that this was a negotiation tactic, but it really came off as a temper tantrum. Later Believe that me, night, Walt I've gets drunk and Loki tells Hank that. that Heisenberg is still at large. Chaotic neutral. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. A this line has been memed to death, but holy shit, it is great. It's a moment where Walt finally tells Skyler how hardcore he's gotten into criminal underworld. He does this not only to reassure her, but to show off to himself just how much he's grown over the series. Chaotic neutral. I, I think if you're going to buy me off, buy me off. Walt is not doing great this episode. After his blowout with Skyler, he buys Junior a fancy car. And while Jesse is out with Mike, Walt, in a spout of pettiness, hires a bunch of immigrant ladies to help him clean the lab since he refuses to do it. All he managed to do was piss off Gus and get the gals deported. Chaotic neutral. No, I'm sure he'll see me. Skylar gets a real bad rap in the Breaking Bad fandom. And yes, her sleeping with Ted to get revenge on Walt isn't great, but like, she's absolutely correct in making Walt return the sports car. In a hissy fit, Walt destroys it instead of returning it. After dropping off the money for Skylar to launder, he then synthesizes ricin to use on Gus and hands it to Jesse. Chaotic neutral. Stick this on the car, this part right here. It's a magnet. And see where he goes. 
Hank reviews some evidence thanks to Walt's drunken ramble from a few episodes ago. Because of this, he strong arms Walt into helping him look for Gus. He freaks out and tries to move up his timetable to kill him. True neutral. My brother-in-law, my D, he... Soon he will probably, in the near future, take a ride out to a certain distribution center to look around for things. Discovering that Gus has a distribution center, Hank calls Walt to drive him out and then look at it. Walt calls Mike and their cartel work to clean their operations. Lawful neutral. How did you know I was at his house last night? Suspecting Jesse isn't being truthful about Gus, Walter bugs his car and confronts him later that night. They get into a fight and end on bad terms. Walter is convinced that Jesse will turn on him and plans his next move. Chaotic neutral. Can we just keep this between us? Would you do that for me? In a delirious state, Walter is found by Junior, who came back to check up on him. Walter says he got into a fight and claims it was over gambling. Junior takes him back to bed and accidentally calls him by Jess's name. He apologizes to Junior afterwards, saying he was on painkillers. The next morning, they have a great heart-to-heart -heart conversation where he tells Junior about his non-existent relationship with his own father, and he doesn't want Junior thinking of him as a weak and dying man. Junior tells him that he would prefer thinking of Walter as a weak man than a liar, which is what he's been doing over the past year. This is an unexpected Nat 20 scene, I'll explain this more in the analysis neutral good i'm done explaining myself walter continues his work and stakeout with hank once hank is into the laundromat he even veers into oncoming traffic as an attempt to delay him this kind of works for a bit as walter continues his production being smuggled in chaotic neutral in the meantime there's a the matter of your brother-in-law you can't if you try to interfere i will I will kill your son. I will kill your infant daughter. Eventually, he reaches the end of their patience because Walt is then fired by Gus, and he gets threatened and panics. He tells Saul to call the DEA about the hit from Gus and attempts to vanish. However, this doesn't work because he doesn't realize Skylar gave their emergency money away to the Ted. Chaotic good and Nat 20 scene. I'm the real target. But we'll all be safer at Hank's. No, That's no, no. No one will be safe at Hank's if I'm there. Receiving the death threat, Walt temporarily accepts his fate and elects to stay behind, waiting for the hitman to come and take him out. Since he tipped off the DEA and his family to protect themselves, we'll call this lawful good. Who do you know? Who's okay with using children? Jesse, who do you know? Who's allowed children to be murdered? The last two episodes are nothing but high-octane intensity. Walter set in motion a plan that involves slightly poisoning a kid and creating remote detonation bombs. When that fails, he uses his neighbor to fish assassins away from his house. He elicits the help of Hector from season one for revenge. Hector then lures Gus over to the nursing home by contacting the DEA. Walter then rigs his chair to explode, to which leads to a nat 20 rest of the episode. Neutral evil. He then rescues his partner and sets the place on fire, and they leave Gus's empire behind. Chaotic good. What happened? I won. As I mentioned in my Jesse Pinkman video, we'll be tackling Season 5 Walter and Jesse on our final Thursday video this month, simply because Walter is such a different character once Season 5 rolls in. Season 1 through 4 Walter is a man rediscovering his purpose in life. There's an obnoxious interpretation going around on the internet right now saying that Breaking Bad is a commentary on toxic masculinity. While a major conversation between Walter and Gus involves the nature of men and their purpose in a family, it is mostly used as a m means of manipulation between the two. Walter is not a traditionally masculine man, nor does he deem it very important to be seen as such. In fact, Walter is more than happy to take advantage of the fact that people see him as nothing more than a weak and foolish old geezer in order to gain the element of surprise. Yes, toxic masculinity is a factor of Walter's flaws, but this is not the main theme of the series. In fact, season five is very explicit in the fact that Walter's biggest problem is pride. Walter has had two major wounds before the events of the series. That is the death of his father and the what he perceives 
as the theft of his life's work by Grey Matter Technologies. The death of his father at such a young age poisoned the idea of how men should be looked at by their families. And while Walter never hated his father, it was hard for him to respect him when his only clear memory was watching him waste away in a hospital bed. He is even surprised when his own son doesn't care about that. His formula and life being stolen by Gretchen and Elliot is a blow to his pride that he could never recover from. If he had waited just a bit longer, he could have been remembered as one of the most influential and successful men in history. But due to his impatience and pride, he has been left penniless in his golden years. At the start of the series, Walt is basically a broken man coasting throughout the rest of his life. And to him, he partially thanks his own cancer for allowing him to regain control of his life. And this isn't uncommon for people going through those sorts of life crises. I can say for myself that I almost thank my school for releasing me from my contract when they did. It gave me the opportunity to expand my business and my channel. I am also somewhat grateful for the pandemic, which gave me the opportunity to regain control of my health and lose weight. Many men need urgent stress in their lives in order to see what's clear before them. Many times, men without goals feel that death is a better alternative and will take the opportunity to change things around them. Now, granted, Walt did none of that shit. He took a fast and dirty method to quickly get money and left trails of bodies around him to eventually climb to the top of an evil, although admittedly impressive, empire. And like I mentioned in the Gus video, the strength of Breaking Bad is the fact that many of these characters become absolute monsters, though they are understandable and compelling in their motivations. And that's why this series will be remembered, and not because of a topical and easily reached conclusion about toxic masculinity. Season 1 through 4 Walter is very, very interesting because it's about a man desperately trying to reclaim control over his life in a very time-limited scenario. People were rooting for Walter despite the fact that he did some awful things. But for now, that's where we'll end the discussion. Be sure to come back next week when our sympathetic protagonist makes a turn into a complete and destructive monster. Thank you to the patrons, and I'll see you all next time.